folks and uh, welcome to Gourmet Shed. Uh, what I'm going to take you through today is uh, a different system of weathering that uh, I've come up with. Uh, it's similar to a lot of uh, other people's methods I suppose but it's just the way I do it. It's uh, fairly simple and uh, gets a fairly good result and to some extent would be reversible because it could be washed off uh, mostly. Anyway, uh, let's have a look at what we need. To start off I'll be using some of this uh, black acrylic artist paint and uh, that will be uh, severely uh, diluted and that will be a wash that's going to go over uh, this little wagon here. Uh, yeah, so that's the first thing. Uh, next we need a suitable jar to mix it up in, so something smallish, anything you've got, but a glass jar is very good. And we'll use a, a craft stick to uh, put the, uh, the paint on to put it into the jar. And last of all, some Windex. Uh, this is a glass cleaner. And uh, I read somewhere quite a few years ago that Windex is good for um, thinning uh, acrylic paints to be used in airbrushes. And I've used it uh, successfully in that regard. Um, and I don't know why. I don't know what the chemical properties are compared to water. But uh, it certainly seems to work okay. So we'll be using Windex. So we simply add a very small amount of paint to the end of the uh, craft stick. Just enough so it'll sit on there. That'll probably do. We then put that in the jar and, and then we get the Windex and give it about 30 squirts of Windex. Right, that should be enough. And then we start mixing it up in the uh, in the jar and check the, um, the stick from time to time you'll see that there's still a good amount on the stick so we'll go and get a brush and just push that off the jar off the uh, stick sorry and eventually What we'll have in the jar is a very dilute solution, or a wash if you like, of black. It's got to be very thin. So I've got all of that off the stick now. I'll just stir that around. Get to mix it very thoroughly. Now when you think it's mixed just take a piece of white paper and just get some on the brush and make a streak. So if you're not getting really, really dark streaks of black in there you've got it. It should be a, an even coloured wash. That's pretty good. Okay we're set to go. Okay so we just simply lay the wagon on its side. I like to do the sides and the ends first before I do the roof. And then we just add it very gently to the wagon. Cover the lot. And you'll find that you'll see the uh, joins in the planks start to get this dark uh, colour in between them. You get a few bubbles from the um, from the Windex but don't worry about that you won't see them once it dries so we're just adding the wash over the side of the van now it's very tempting to sort of move on you can even put some on the subframe here doesn't really matter but it's best just to let that dry and depends on the weather conditions we've got rain here at the moment so it's not going to dry very quickly and 
let it dry before you go on to the, uh, the next side or the end because with it laying flat like this um, the wash won't move it won't drain off the side of the wagon if I turn the wagon upright the wash will run down to the bottom so it's best to let it dry and it stays in all the grooves and everything where it's supposed to so it takes a bit of patience with this method folks and um, you know on a warm day it'll dry fairly quickly but um, today it's not going to so we just have to wait it out now this this sort of weathering what I'm going to do later on is add um, uh, chalk pastels to this or weathering powder you know it's pretty much the same thing um, however we won't do that until it's all dry um, but you don't have to add chalk pastels to it once it dries it adds a bit more relief with just the wash over it so if you don't want to go into full-on heavy weathering uh, you can do this it sort of highlights the rivet de detail better and the the joins and the planks and all that sort of thing so now we wait right so that side's pretty much dry enough to uh, carry on so what I'll, I'll do is an end now and uh, I'll just sit the wagon on the end of a piece of wood although it's not going to sit the um, yeah vacuum hose is getting in the way so we don't even need that piece of wood but you can do it with some wagons okay it'll just sit on the desk like that actually we'll go back to the wood because the coupling gets in the way so that's better okay so I'll get on and do these other sides and uh, and then we'll come back and uh, have a look at the roof And now we do the roof, so here we go. Try and put it on the nice long even strokes on the roof. And try and avoid any pooling if you can. Just by um, working it with the brush. Any pooling that uh, leaves any sort of marks or anything, you can just rub it off with your finger when it's dry or dry ish. I think that'll do. Okay, folks, here's just a quick comparison between the two wagons. Now, this one has got the, uh, the wash on it, and you can see well, the roof is marked like that. You can see the one on the right hand side looks you know really nice and clean this one looks a bit weathered not too weathered but it's it's weathered and you've got that sort of staining on the left hand wagon whereas the, the right hand wagon is just uh, absolutely clear so yeah you can see no marks at all on the end of that one and then we go around to this one and you've got you know, signs of wear so, I mean, you could leave it there. Uh, this, is a, this is a more subtle sort of weathering, but uh, what we'll do is we'll take it further on this one and uh, we'll add some more detail. Right, now I'm going to add some more weathering. So I'm going to take a, a grey pastel, which is uh, one of these pastel sticks. This is a chalk pastel and a, and a blade and just scrape off the powder onto the wagon mostly along the bottom not worrying about the under frame yet and then take a dry brush and brush upwards on the wagon because most of its grime will be at the bottom 
but this is this is giving it a good coverage here as you can see just brush upwards and then uh, just blow it off <laughs> any excess and you're left with with that now to do the underframe I like to get a, uh, a rust colored chalk pastel which is basically orange and same process just just along the subframe chassis whatever you want to call it just add a bit on and then we will brush that on as well I have some brown pastel as well not much of this left but uh, put this along the bottom flick some onto the bottom of the wagon but mostly around the wheel axles etc just on the bottom there and again we just brush it in brush it up if necessary and that's it so I'll get on and do the rest of the wagon and uh, then we'll have a look at it now for the roof folks I like to use a uh, it's a charcoal colored pastel it's not black more of a charcoal color you can get uh, jet black of course but uh, we'll uh, and I run this along the length of the wagon just to uh, stain it up and you can also uh, put some on the sides of the wagon if you want to so that's that'll do for the roof I might put some on the sides I think just a bit here and there And of course you can um, blow off the excess eventually. So it's quite a simple process folks, really, nothing to it. And I reckon it looks better, looks more realistic. Uh, we'll add a bit more on this side. And it's pretty quick really. So we'll take that back into the train room and um, and have a look at it. Right there we are, folks. It's uh, you can see even the uh, chassis is all sort of weathered there. The size of the van compared to the its neighbour, it's been toned right down. And if you look at the roof, it's got visible signs of wear, etc. Compared to the one next to it. Now it all, all depends on your taste and and what you like. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I sort of prefer the weathered look myself. Uh, it adds a bit more realism. Of course, you can do the uh, the, the buffers as well. I like to um, paint the, the face of the buffer silver and then rub off the center section. You can just keep going with this stuff until you get it uh, really weathered. But um, yeah, it's a simple process. I don't know whether this color is actually a good example to show it on, but um, yeah, it, the process is the same for any sort of wagon. So there you are. Right folks, uh, you're probably wondering now, you know, do I bother to uh, seal all that work that I've just done on that wagon, uh, all the, the pastels, etc. And uh, I don't. I don't do that anymore. And the simple reason is that uh, if I get sick of the weathering or if I think I may find a better way to do it, uh, so you never know what's going to happen in the future. Um, I can take that wagon inside and pretty much with some warm water and possibly even some soap, I can wash nearly all of that stuff off that I've put on there. So it's reversible. That's what I like about this system. So um, I've done, done wagons quite some time ago with this method. 
um, and forget about the, the wash, I've just used pastels and nothing else and it doesn't come off, it just stays on there unless you deliberately determine that you want to take it off, wash it off. So I like that side of it. Uh, yeah, so that's about all I've got for you at the moment. Uh, if you look up onto the uh, top right hand corner of the screen there, you'll probably see a link to uh, Gourmet Vision. Uh, if you want to check that out, I've just made a, a simple uh, channel now for um, small movies that I, I want to make. I've, I've, I've only got one up there at the moment um, and it's not suitable for children so if there's any children watching uh, don't bother clicking on that link. Uh, that doesn't mean it's very rude, it's a bit scary. So uh, yeah, just a little thing I thought I'd have a go at, something artistic. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm on my way to Hollywood, folks. I'll see you there. <laughs> anyway, cheers for now, and uh, take it easy, and I'll see you next time.